It's been nearly 10 years since Bloodborne, and whilst it is still a masterpiece, many of us would love to see a remaster or a PS5 remake. Unfortunately, these are very muddy waters because Sony owns the brand. So until that day that may or may not ever come, Lies of P, or Pinocchio Souls if you will, is as close as we've come to any real kind of Bloodborne follow-up. Here's the good news though, It's f***ing awesome. Lies of P also does more than enough to stand on its own, and it will leave you in no doubt that even though it often looks and feels a lot like Bloodborne, it is absolutely its own game. If you're a Souls or a Souls-like fan, and especially if you have Games Pass, then you owe it to yourself to check out Lies of P. So right off the bat, the Bloodborne influences, more than any other Souls title, are immediately obvious. The city of Krat often hints at the shiny greatness that could have been, had all of its resident mechanical labourers not gone mad and slaughtered everyone. Now I haven't watched Pinocchio in at least three decades at this point, but I remember the broad strokes of the story. Lies of P takes some very liberal interpretations with the source material, but personally I think it works really well, and ironically I find it a hell of a lot less disturbing than what I remember of the Disney version. Like how Jiminy, spelt Gemini, is still your guide if not your conscience. And there's a creepy fox and cat duo that you probably shouldn't trust either. Oh and Geppetto is all about reminding you to be a good boy. When he isn't asking you to slaughter the hundreds of machines that get in your way that is. I guess that's why this Pinocchio is less wooden preschool boy and more frontman for an emo band boy. He's so edgy and things. The Soulsborne blueprint has been followed very closely with Lies of P. From enemies that hit you like a truck, to the styles of combat and managing your stamina and the stargazer bonfires, it's all here, and it's all done better than most other imitators. I'll give special mention to the unlockable shortcuts and interconnecting level designs, as it's the best I've seen in quite some time. Even though Lies of P is built on an established formula, it also does more than enough to put its own stamp on things. The first of which is what I consider to be a beautiful marriage between Bloodborne and Sekiro. Very clearly based on the Bloodborne rally system, if you block an attack, your health will go down, but you'll also have a window of opportunity to get it back by returning damage to your enemies. You can dodge in Lies of P, and it can be pretty effective when upgraded, but blocking and parrying will serve you far better, just like in Sekiro. If an enemy hits you and you weren't blocking, they will hit really f***ing hard. If you dodge away and try to heal, but you don't dodge quite far enough, it will happen again. And if there's more than one enemy, you see where I'm going with this. Lies of P has the potential to kill you extremely quickly, even by soul standards. And some enemies have some truly horrendous stun lock attacks. Like these guys, who charge you with pitchforks. And these guys, who just keep on smashing you when you're down, like a giant mechanical child with a spade at the beach. However, once you get the hang of blocking, it is all so much more manageable, and incredibly satisfying in a way that only a Souls-type game can be. Blocking, reducing damage, gaining it back, juggling the enemies, it's all a dance, and you feel freaking god-tier when you get it right. I've seen a lot of opinion pieces saying Lies of P is too hard, and just as many saying it's too easy, but if there's one thing I've learned on my Souls journey, difficulty is extremely subjective, and if you're enjoying yourself, then that's the most important thing. Thankfully, Lies of P does a lot more to justify its own identity than just cleverly subverting the expectations of Bloodborne and Sekiro graduates. Like Sekiro, you also have a customizable Winter Soldier arm, and it can put some very fresh spins on combat. My personal favourite is a grappling hook that pulls enemies towards you, but you can also upgrade it so that you can Spider-Man your way over to your enemies. Very useful for bigger miniboss types. Lies of P also experiments a lot with elemental damage. When you deal elemental style damage to an enemy, you'll see colour-coded damage numbers accordingly. I found a lot of success early on with this electric type weapon, because I figured mechanical puppets probably weak against this type of damage, and hot damn was I right. For your info, you can buy the weapon from this dude, pump some points into advance, and go have fun. 
Lies of P also does an excellent job of highlighting important elements of the gameplay. In addition to colour-coded damage, enemies glow red when they're about to do an unblockable attack, which you will need to perfect parry if you aren't going to dodge. If you deal enough damage to an enemy then it may develop a glowing white outline. When this happens you have a window to hit them with a fully charged heavy attack, and if you do, you'll break their posture. This opens them up to uber satisfying fatal attacks, which are again very clearly denoted with these claw marks when you're stood in the right spot, as well as very helpful floor markers to help you find the right spot. Lies of P has a decent variety of weapons for you to play with, aligning themselves with three types of damage, motivity, technique and advance, basically strength, dex and magic respectively. But where it truly shines is in its brilliant weapon customization options. Every standard weapon is made up of two parts, the blade and the handle. The blade dictates the type and amount of damage dealt, and the handle dictates the moveset and which stats the weapon scales with. Weapons can be upgraded as you'd expect, and you can also customise handles to scale even further with their chosen stat, or you can switch their allegiance entirely. When it comes to weapon combinations, you have a ton of choice available to you. Do you like using that big swingy weapon head, but sometimes you wish you could do faster, close range stabs with it? No problem, just pop it on the end of this knife handle. In addition to your stats and your equipment, your real life boy also amasses quite the stylish wardrobe very much in keeping with the aesthetic of steampunk dystopia. It's always nice when the developers remember to keep up with fashion souls. On a more real note, you eventually gain access to a wealth of character upgrades that are tied to your puppet heart, or as the game calls it, your pea organ. Yep, that is actually what they call it. Moving past all the obvious jokes, the upgrades here are well worth your time, like increasing how many healing pulse cells you can carry, and giving yourself larger stagger windows. The world of Lies of P is equally beautiful and fascinating, and is another fine example of how closely the game can follow the established Souls blueprint at times, as well as how well it can strike out on its own, though the end results can be a bit of a mixed bag, usually falling somewhere between cheap and clever. Like there's a point where Jiminy will literally tell you he's looking out for an ambush as you round a corner. You'll see some enemies, and as you're dealing with them, there's a good chance you'll be so focused on the fight that you won't notice the dodgy floorboards that you're about to fall through. And neither will he, so thanks for nothing, Cricket Dude. Remember earlier I mentioned pitchfork enemies that can stunlock you? Well, when I saw this guy, I figured it was surely an ambush, so I dragged him to me, sorted him out, and figured I could run in and avoid getting hit from the side. I was right, but I never counted on the doors all slamming shut and there being like six more of these guys instead of one or two. Fair play to Lies of P for managing to trap me even though I knew it was coming, but things like this do sometimes feel a bit cheap. However, on the other end of the scale, one thing I absolutely loved in Lies of P is their take on the mandatory poison area. We all know that every Soulsborn or Souls-like will include a poison area. None of us want it, but it's a fact of life, like taxes or calories. Lies of P manifests this area as corrosive water, with a big old stumpy boss in the middle of it. But you're in a factory, so if you go exploring instead of just charging in, you'll eventually find drainage pumps, Believe me when I tell you that the Stompy Boss is so much easier when you don't have to manage corrosion damage at the same time. Oh and are you ready for the best thing ever? Elevators reset back to their default position when you die. You don't need to preemptively roll over the switch to put them back. If you know, you know. Whilst the story is pretty good, I love the characters and the dialogue delivery more than anything else. Vanini is such a fantastically over-the-top Italian stereotype to the point where Family Guy could have written him. There you are, my boy. But he works so well with such a cheesy and eccentric world. Whilst NPCs do have a tendency to fall into Soulsian levels of creepy, everything is delivered much more coherently than in the Souls games of old. And I do have to give special mention to the bosses. Again, you're unlikely to struggle if you have prior Souls credentials, but they are still brilliantly designed and very intimidating to look at and obviously yes, they can obliterate you if you aren't careful. The hardest boss for me was by far the first one, because I hadn't figured out that blocking was better than dodging yet, but once it clicked, he didn't stand a chance, even if I did find it consistently unnerving going toe to toe with a massive mechanical ringmaster.
Souls likes rarely come close to the genuine article. Even the really good ones like Jedi Fallen Order or Darksiders 3 don't tend to feel very Soulsy outside of design principles, like having enemies that hit really hard or that respawn when you rest. Lies of P takes all of this and runs extremely closely to the Souls instruction manual, whilst also injecting tons of its own ideas and charm into the mix, and the end result is extremely fun. Lies of P might not be as mechanically good as its sources of inspiration, but it is much, much better than most. It is a solid B plus compared to the A star of Sekiro and Bloodborne, and probably the best non-Souls Souls game I've ever played. And there you have it guys, that was my take on Lies of P and why it is a true Souls-like. As always, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I'd love to hear your take on Pinocchio Souls down in the comments. Have you tried it out, and what did you think? And did you find it to be harder or easier than more traditional Souls games? Please also consider liking this video, and maybe even subscribing to my channel if this is your sort of thing and you want to see more of it. Thank you very much for watching, take care out there, and I'll see you on the next one.